This Bobcat controller base costs a little bit over $1,600 to replace. That's why today I'm gonna to be showing you how to fix it. I have the unit powered on, and as you can see, everything seems to be moving a little bit slow. All of my lights are flickering. My stepper motor is moving very slowly. If I try to bring the lights up, I can't. I'm not really getting any response from the buttons. Okay, so when I press the button over here, one, one thousand, two, one. So it took two seconds pretty much to respond, but I'm really not getting the functionality that I should. So let's open up the unit and take a closer look inside. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick. I started Nick's Electronics Repair over a decade ago, and since then we have fixed over 28,000 devices. Now this is the exact issue that the customer who sent in this controller base was stating they were experiencing on their end. So now that we've confirmed that, let's go ahead and do some simple voltage and resistance checks. And I want to start on the left side. It looked like my lights button wasn't working. So if we flip it over, I placed my negative lead of the multimeter on the ground pins over here. I'm in DC mode, and we're going to check the rib in over here for those buttons. Now if I check the top in, I should be getting 12 volts coming in, and I am getting that 12 volts. And for the lights, it's gonna be the last pin. So I'm gonna lift the unit up and press the button. And as I'm pressing the button, the 12 volts appear. So that tells me that the button is actually working. We're just not getting an effect on the controller base itself. Now, if you've seen any of my other Bobcat controller base repair videos, then you most likely know that we're gonna be checking some of the resistors to see if they failed to open. I removed the board out of the shell, and the first area we're gonna check is this grid of resistors to the left of the button connector. So this whole row is supposed to be 10 kilo ohms, and we're going to check them one by one. This is a fairly tedious process. Now, these are supposed to be 4.75, I believe, on this row. And that is what we're getting. Now there are hundreds of resistors to check on these boards. We're not gonna do all of them here on camera, otherwise it would take a very long time. So nothing is defective over here. I'm gonna check this row over here next. Now this row is usually in charge of powering up the unit, so if you have a dead no power, these are the resistors you'll wanna check. And on this row over here, oh, this resistor is open. So R56 over here. Oh, for a second I got mega ohms, 40 mega ohms. So that's supposed to be 7,500 ohms, and it is showing mega ohms, which means that that resistor has failed open and will need to be replaced. And then we have one more over here to the left. That one's supposed to be 10 kilo ohms, and that's exactly what we get. So this is our open resistor over here. I am scratching away a little bit of that silicone that is covering it. And now that I've done that, I'm going to recheck the resistance just to make sure I didn't have any of that silicone in the way. And I'm still getting high mega ohms. Let's go ahead and desolder it and replace it. Now it seems silly, but we're just gonna do a check. And sure enough, we are getting 7.5 kilo ohms. And to be clear, while well, right now we've only replaced one of those resistors, whenever any of those five fail, we do wanna replace all five, because that means that the other four are probably not too far behind. But for the purposes of this video, let's go ahead and retest right now to see if that made any difference. We just plugged the unit back in. Let's power it on. Okay, well it's definitely not fixed, because as I'm pressing buttons, I'm not really getting much of a response. Okay, so our lights are flashing radically. But it does seem better. Okay, our battery voltage. Light stayed on longer. This is still moving really slowly. So that means that our controller base has more defective components that need to be replaced. I will replace the other four resistors in that area off screen, and then we'll start searching for more defects. So I've now replaced all five resistors. Let's go ahead and make our way down here. And we're gonna start with R48, which is a 100 ohm resistor. And sure enough, it's completely open. All right, let's check a few of these guys down here. 7501, so these are supposed to be 7.5 kilo ohms. 7,500 and they are all measuring exactly that at this time yep okay they all check out we have a few more down here all good all good 
and last two bottom left of the processor, also good, also good. And now we have a few different values over here. 4751, which I believe is 4,700, and that's exactly what we're getting. Then we have 471, which is 470 ohms, and it's actually showing at 0.47 kilo ohms, which is of course good. Let's make our way up here. If we ever have issues with lights not working or the display, this IC chip is in charge of it. So if any of these resistors over here fail, that could cause this IC chip to malfunction and that could be why our lights are not activating. Okay, starting with the bottom R34, 5112, that's 50 kilo ohms or 51 kilo ohms and that one's good. R33, 1002, that's supposed to be a 10 kilo ohm or 10,000 ohms and that's open as well, okay? So this one is 821, which should be 820. It is in circuit, so it is actually showing a lower reading, which is 334 right now, and that is expected. This one is 680, is supposed to be 68, but also is gonna show a little lower. This one's showing 64, but that's also okay. We just don't wanna see it open. Now this 1002, 10 kilo ohm resistor is open. This one is showing exactly 9.99 kilo ohms, so that's good. And finally, the top one is also failed open and will need to be replaced. So we have, so we've just found four defective resistors, three for this IC chip, and then that 100 ohm resistor right next to the clock, that was the first one we looked at. We're gonna go back to the 100 ohm resistor and do that one first. Again, I'm gonna use the metal brush. Let's rotate the board a little bit. And I'm gonna do a quick clean up here with isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip just to get rid of some of that flux before we install our replacement resistor. Just gonna try and center it a little bit better. Let's go ahead and do another live check to see if that made a difference. All right, let's power on the units. Huge difference, oh my God, okay. We have immediate response. And my lights are no longer flickering. They were flickering before. Let me see ours. Okay, now it's instant. The moment I press the button, I get immediate feedback. My lights are still not working, however. Let me see if I can get the codes. I can trigger fault codes I was not able to before and my stepper motors, my gauges are now moving quickly. They were not before. If we typically just find only one of these resistors failed open, we will want to replace every single one of them. And that's again, because if one of them has failed, typically the others are not too far behind. And we have seen every single one of these fail before. So as a preventative, we just wanna make sure that when we fix these, we're not just fixing it for the next couple of weeks or months, but we're fixing it for the next 10 years. So for this one, I think I'm just gonna do all of them on screen. Just adding blobs of solder and then swiping the resistors away. And so they're just sticking to the bottom of my iron. And the last one, the 51 kilo ohm. And for those of you wondering, these guys over here, the brown ones, those are capacitors. I've never really seen these fail, so we're not gonna replace them. I'm gonna do a quick little cleanup with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. This is 99.99% isopropyl alcohol. I pressed some of my resistors. So now we're gonna slide them in one by one. Okay, we're gonna rotate the board. So I always try to make it as easy as possible for the angles and the soldering as I can. Ooh. 
Okay, I don't think I'm getting good contact. There we go. I'm not a big fan of some of these joints, so I'm gonna add some flux, and we're gonna to touch these up. Okay, that looks a lot better. Beautiful. And we're definitely gonna to wanna to clean this up because I added extra flux on top of what was already in the solder. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's power it back on. Okay, and it looks like we're on some sort of timer here. Glow 21, 20. We still have our battery light flashing, so we'll have to deal with that. That's an issue. A lot of these other lights are okay, and that's just because we have a lot of the sensors are not currently or actively plugged in, but this battery is not supposed to be flashing. Okay, let's see, are the lights working? And they are not. So now we're gonna make our way up over here to this ICU4. Now typically when these resistors fail, it will cause this IC to malfunction, which is in charge of the stepper motors. And we have R14471. That one is showing open. It is in the mega ohms. R18, that's supposed to be 10 kilo ohms. That is exactly what it's showing. Let's see, R15, correct reading, 0.46 kilo ohms, so that's within tolerance. Our 10 kilo ohm resistor R21 over here is open, so we'll need to replace that one. R23 over here, 0 0.467, that one's good. This one's open. Let's check out these over here. These are all supposed to be 10 kilo ohms. So far the first two are open. This one's okay, 9.99. And last one, 9.99. Okay, so it seems like about half, maybe a little bit more of these resistors are failed and will need to be replaced. So of course, we're gonna replace all of them. But same process as before, we're going to add a bunch of solder to both sides of each resistors, knock them off. Put it clean up again. All right, we're gonna start by soldering down our 10,000 ohm resistors. And my joints are not perfect, that's okay. We'll touch them up in a moment. And then flux everything. So I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference, but let's go ahead and test it again to see if we do have any better symptoms. If I try to power it on, I can do my code, everything seems to work, but my lights are still not working. Our battery is still being triggered. Oh, what just happened? Okay, so we're still getting some sort of malfunction. We're gonna to have to keep going and keep looking around to see what other resistors might have failed open. So I did do a few further checks off screen and I was not able to find any other defective resistors on this side. So I decided to completely remove the circuit board and do some checks on the front actually over here. And I did find two more. So this is where the screen usually is. Those are the pads for the data for the screen. And just below those, we have two resistors right there. The one on the left, 4752, is supposed to be a 47 kilo ohm resistor, and it is measuring completely open. And the one on the right, 1002, 10 kilo ohms, and that one is reading 29.3 mega ohms. So it has also failed open and will need to be replaced. I have checked all of the other resistors on the front side. I've not found any other defective ones so far. My 47,500 ohm resistor does look a little weird, but I assure you it is correct. Final test, hopefully. And look at that. It looks like our lights are on. Can I turn them off? No, yes. We have control of the lights. Okay, it looks like those last two resistors did it. 
Okay, look at that. My battery light is no longer flashing on, so it looks like we have full functionality again. So at this point, I do believe we have a successful repair. However, we are not done yet with the repairs. And the reason for is because this entire area, we did not replace any resistors. But when we see these two over here, a majority of these over here and here, and then these guys over here fail, we typically will see some of these guys also start to go bad. Now, with the multimeter, they were measuring with intolerance, so technically we don't need to replace them, but if I don't replace those today, then this unit may fail in the next year or two. And we wanna make sure that when we send these out, they work for the next 10. So we'll go ahead and do that off screen, but for the sake of this video, we'll wrap it up here. So if you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more content. And if you have one of these Bobcat units you'd like to send in for us to fix, I'll have links to our flat rate services, which come with a one year warranty. And those are available in the video description down below. Thanks for watching.